You know, some people say I'm the sexiest writer in the world. <laughs> there are, of course, people who say otherwise. But they're idiots. <laughs> Hi, my name is Procrastinating Writer. Well, really it's not, it's James Edward, but let's begin, shall we? <laughs> I really need a new introduction. That one doesn't sound poppy enough. Uh, maybe I should open with a joke. Maybe that's how I should do it. Um, let's think. Today, I'm quite happy because I get to check out my new L'Oreal speakers. Yeah, L'Oreal speakers. Top quality, high class, amazing volume. Well, this video is about lying. Well, it isn't. It is. It isn't. No, really, it is. One thing I find weird that no one seems to be talking about is about the book Cuckoo's Calling. And for those who don't know, it's basically J.K. Rowling's non-Harry Potter book. You know, because apparently she does that. Do you remember someone called Robert Galbraith? 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 I've never heard it spoken. Galbraith? Galbraith! Galbraith! J.K. Rowling wrote a book called A Cuckoo's Calling. Uh, a Cuckoo's Calling. Cuckoo's Calling. <laughs> I just love to be... I was just like, Cuckoo's Calling. Cuckoo's Calling. Say it enough times. Cuckoo's Calling. Cuckoo's Calling. It's, it's, it's got a nice ring to it. But... Is it the Cuckoo's Calling? Let me check my notes. I don't know. I'm going to give you Robert Galbraith's or Galbraith's or Gal... I don't know. Uh, is bio. This is what they used on the page and in the book and said, yep, he was the author. He wrote it. I'm going to read it to you. After serving several years with the Royal Military Police, Robert Galbraith was attached to the SIB, Special Investigative Branch, the plainclothes branch of the RMP. He left the military in 2003 and has been working since then with the civilian security industry. The idea for Cole Moran's strike grew directly out of his own experiences and those of his military friends who returned to the civil world. Civil world. Robert Galbraith is pseudonym. That part's emphasised. That's the only true thing about that paragraph. Robert Galbraith does not exist at all. He is a fictional character. His bio is a lie. Can you ever trust an author's biography again? That's the question I'm asking, because why the hell not? I have an author's biography, I might as well make you think, hmm, maybe he's lying too, maybe every author's lying, I might just strike that paranoia into you. Personally, this is where I come from on the entire topic itself. I can see the attraction in lying or hiding away certain aspects of yourself and certain things, such as if I say, I hate teenagers, I don't like them, I think young adult books are shockingly written, terrible i think young people like teenagers especially girls uh especially boys especially every gender ever just does not contribute to society you saw a problem teenagers are a problem they should just be cut down shot that's not an action for shot that's an action for shot cut down shot dead and just laying waste because i hate them i want to hide that from people who read my books which are it's marketed towards teenagers, so you can kind of see the problem there if I actually held that belief, but I don't. I can understand the need to hide certain things away, and an author's, author's biography is a kind of way of the author saying, look, this is why I'm the right person to tell the story. Um, for example, if you're going to write a book on lying, it's better in your autobiography to sort of show why you're the expert or the person who should be talking about the subject. I mean, someone who used to be a investigator maybe or someone in the fbi who used to do it which i, I think is actually a real book with a real author who's who's done something like this um as opposed to just me doing it where i don't really lie very often the other noticeable exception of course is politicians they lie all the goddamn time i'm looking at you david cameron no one actually talks about the subject of authors biographies apart from authors and i don't know how many readers actually look at a biography and look at the author's biography and want to know more about the author before they read the book. And so I just kind of wanted to get your view on this. Uh, also as well, tell you some of the articles I have on my website at the moment. It's more of a blog, but I call it a website because it makes me sound more professional. It's got its own .com and everything. Go on my website. I've got some poems, uh, actually, but it's not about suicide or love or death or a, a leaf or wind or the sun or the moon 
or the sea, or a beach, or a cut, or a knife, or a gun, or the afterlife, or birth, or, you know, anything horrible, or anything happy. It's really just miscellaneous things I wrote crappy poems about, such as there's the one with Stacey Dooley, because I like Stacey Dooley. I hope I say her name right, because if she watches this and she says, say, James, you uh, didn't say my name right, I'd be like, oh, okay, that's embarrassing. Sorry, Stacey Dooley. Sorry. I have another article uh, about romance readers and are they really readers? Yes, it's one of those where I ask if people who like to read romance fiction are actually readers. Why? Because, well, why not ask a question? It's important to ask questions. It's probably going to be very distracting when I edit it that my face changes into pure white and it looks like I've suddenly turned into an albino, but... Oh! Now, if you don't mind, I've got a date with Scarlett Johansson and I've got to fly off and make sure I don't wet myself. Tala!